Já me tinham ouvido hoje? Não. Ok, terceira sessão da tarde. Agora vamos ficar aqui com o Emad. Portanto, eu agora vou fazer switch to English. So, Emad, a little presentation of you. I did a homework, but still, let's cross fingers. So, Emad is, has over decades about SEO, right? E nowadays is working a lot of AI and machine learning to try to bring different technologies regarding the context of the presentation. So we'll have Emma talking about SEO, a very hot topic. So Emma, thank you so much. Have a great session. Thank you so much. Um, actually, I'm so excited to have you today. It's the first time to present um, English, okay? And... <laughs> Yeah, this is not my first language. So uh, today I will talk about a difficult topic for SEO specialists. Do you have SEO here? SEO? Okay, great. And uh, for sure we have a developers too, right? Developers? Okay. Yeah, okay, because we are fighting together all the day. Yeah, okay. Uh, sorry, the title is uh, too long, uh, implementing SEO friendly headless WordPress architecture. Okay, so let's start. Uh, our agenda today, we're talking about the benefits of headless in WordPress uh, and the challenge. We have a lot of a challenge in headless for sure. We are talking about how Server, right, server side rendering and client side rendering, how it works with browser and uh, the benefits of headless website for SEO and uh, the strategy of SEO talking about site structure and friendly URL and structured data for HSNavit for sure. And finally, we have question and answer. <laughs> okay. It's not updated, by the way. Okay, <laughs> let's skip that. Uh, I was working for WBM UDev as a SEO lead, uh, and now doing uh, SEO consultation. Okay, uh, let's skip this part. <laughs> okay, uh, we need to understand first uh, the headless WordPress, but let me explain the traditional CMS and everyone know what is traditional, especially the SEO. If we need to create a website, we just uh, have a hosting and install a WordPress version and the PyC, we install the CMA plugins and SEO plugins, and that's it. The website is ready. This is called the traditional website. Okay, like a pizza, you have um, like ready-made pizza. Okay, you can't custom the ingredients. You can't uh, Order, for example, cherry tomato for, for the pizza, uh, even you don't like other stuff of pizza. So what the different in headless? In headless, everything in another place, like the content, the code, and design. Also, there is a lot of benefits. You can dispute the content to a lot uh, of devices, like um, mobile applications, uh, laptops, uh, a smartwatch, whatever. So here we have uh, a separated uh, content, separated codes, separated uh, design, everyone working standalone. And uh, actually different here, the comparison between traditional and headless. For example, in traditional, we have a content and CMS backend with a code and plugin and database. And like what I said, we have a hosting and install the themes, the plugins, the site is working. In headless, we have a different uh, uh, content API that pushing the data to the website and the app through the code front-end templates to the user. Uh, we have actually a lot of a challenge here because 
the SEO, majority of SEO, doing a lot of stuff for headless, but they can't see the title or meta description, all of this stuff. So we have a two challenge actually for headless, the limit crawling and the indexing and the rendering issue. And actually the rendering issue is the main issue for headless. Let's start with client-side rendering, CSR. I will explain step-by-step step what can happen in client-side, the user request website. And for example, let's say this website connected to CDN like Cloudflare and Cloudflare serve HTML with JavaScript links, okay? Then the browser download HTML and then the browser download JavaScript and JavaScript then executed the ABI started call the data, okay? And they call the data, still the website not appearing to the user, by the way. So the data coming from the API, okay, and the page is ready for interactive. So what the browsing doing, okay, or how the browser engine work with client side rendering? The server sending HTML to browser and the page is still loading, not appear to user. Then the browser download JavaScript and still the page is not appearing to user. And finally, the JavaScript modern technology like React, Angular, or Next.js execute and still the page is not loading. Finally, the page appearing after all of these steps. That happened only for client-side rendering. The difference in server-side rendering, the user requests a website, and the server sending per rendering HTML, which ready to browser, okay, and the browser is still not showing the website, starting download JavaScript, but here the website and page appear to user. So the user can interact, okay, and for example, the event of Google Analytics 4 can be recorded here, okay? So no delay in events. Then the browser executes the JavaScript framework, okay? And after that, everything is working and everything is executed and the page is loading normally without an issue. How browser engine work with the server-side rendering? The server sending bare rendering HTML, which we're ready for user, and for Google Crawler, because in client-side rendering, we send the MBT HTML with a JavaScript file. So the crawler here consider this is an MBT page, so I will not crawl MBT page. Here, we downloaded, <coughs> sorry, we downloaded uh, the JavaScript, okay, and the page start showing to user, even the JavaScript model technology, whatever, for example, React, executed still the page appear to user and the crawler for sure. So this is steps for a browser engine. Okay, uh, let's talk about strategy. My advice on my strategy, um, I would say to, we need to use a server side rendering, okay, uh, that deliver per rendering HTML and uh, this version of HTML will display to user and the browser. So the crawler now can understand the page and the content in the page and the user as well. So this is dynamic rendering, which is explaining the server sending data to browser and the crawler for the browser sending initial HTML with JavaScript and for crawlers sending initial HTML JavaScript rendering and static HTML to crawler. So Crawler now can understand the page and understand the content. Okay, there is a lot of benefits for sure for headless. One of benefits, it's a cool web vital, the performance for sure. I'm sorry, this is not updated FID. So Google replaced FID with IMP uh, last month, so perhaps, uh, yeah, last month. So one of the most factor important to SEO, the performance of page. So we need to have a great performance, okay? So most of SEO and developers focusing on Core Web Vital. This is one of most important factors. 
Then uh, the developer are free to use that any modern technology. Someone uh, like React, someone uh, choose Next.js or Angular. So here you can, you are free to choose any one of GS, G, JavaScript library. <coughs> Sorry, can I do it? Sorry. Okay, and security. Because everything is separated, so the back end is a standalone, so no one can access back end. So you can doing everything in the front end for the content, everything is separated, and the website is secure. Okay, what's the best practice for the headless? <coughs> Sorry, scoop. The link structure. Sometimes we have websites with not flat architecture, okay? So we have a lot of orphan pages and the orphan pages cannot be crawled. So we should make sure our website is flatted structure and the crawler can access all pages and all pages are connected to each other. This is different between um, the context links as an internal link and the, the link of structure of the website. So here another another one, another reason. Sometimes we uh, we have a website, for example, with a lot of pages for sure. So for consider here we are in the home page. Okay, so here we are in the home page, then let's say this is an e-commerce website. And uh, we are on homepage, then we are going to electronics, then mobile device, and uh, the brand of device, let's say Apple, and here is the product, okay? So no more steps needed, okay? Because the crawlers and Google spiders actually can't crawl more than four steps without the homepage, okay? So this is important to not make the links more deeper. <coughs> yeah, this is the, the best practice if we need it because sometimes we have a home page, category, subcategory, sub subcategory, and product. It's, it's not uh, the, the most the most uh, important for us to have a three or four maximum deep link. Uh, okay. What's the best practice for headless? For sure, today Minya talked about structured data for just a bit. Okay, so this is a very important because it's a, something attractive for the user who are searching in Google. Okay, it's a pair with a different type, and now we have uh, a new version of uh, rich snippet. Okay. Then, uh, you know that the rich snippet, it's uh, like uh, HTML code that's implemented into the page. If we have a, a plugin like Crank Mass, we can, in a brew version, for example, or free version, some, some schema markup uh, are available in the free version and um, the other in the pro version. For example, I'm not promoting it. Uh, the plugin, by the way. But uh, I see there is a lot of features on, uh, on this plugin. So in pro version, we have custom in rich snippet or we have ready rich snippet. We can fill the data and apply it to the page. Uh, product page, whatever the type of uh, schema. Uh, last thing, the friend URL. And the friend URL is one of most important thing because um, sometimes I'm confused with a long URL that contain uh, a lot of parameter. Okay, don't know why. So Google like the clear, uh, the clean uh, URL and short URL. So in my opinion, you need to correct that for the new website. If you have existing website, don't you do that. Okay, if you have existing website and you make any change 
in the URL, you will decrease the indexing page, okay? And we lost. So this is a recommendation only for the new website, okay? Even in migration, we are migrating on the same link, okay? So this is one of my advice. Thank you so much. I finished early. <laughs> Yes, there is a lot of questions, for sure. <laughs> questions? Hello, thank you very much for the presentation. I have a question regarding redirections. How are they influence SEO? Uh, many redirections or few or just... Can okay. you tell us a bit about it? Yeah, we have a 301 redirects and 302, the permanent and temporary. Okay, let's say we have example of pages. Um, how, how many number of pages you are talking about? A view number, huge number? Five, it's okay. For example, we can make a redirect permit according to the topic. If we have outdated content and can be updated, we can update. If we can't update the content, we can create a permit redirects 301 to another topic or related topic, okay? For example, sometimes um, the people are have a seasonal product in e-commerce, okay? Uh, for the summer, for example, and the products is out of stock because let's say we are in the spring now, okay? So sometimes they you recommend to make a redirect 302, temporary redirect, to related product, okay? And some SEO recommend for uh, 10, that which means that content is deleted. So in my opinion, if you have um, another topic, you can make a redirect if we have a five pages only. If we have a huge number, we need to uh, study the weight, the weight of the page, it's indexed or not. So we need to like make some research about the pages are indexed or not. Okay, if not indexing. Okay, and sometimes we can give a no follow index in the head. Okay, sometimes we we are doing that without redirect. So according to situation, according to uh, the website uh, industry, we can decide. We can make a redirect permit or, redir or uh, uh, temporary or just make a no-fall uh, tag for the page to the indexing yeah. More? Thank you for the presentation. With more and more websites uh, behind a proxy like Cloudflare, uh, <laughs> how advisable would it be to have a headless uh, implementation knowingly that a proxy like so is in between server side and the client's device? Yeah, that's a very good question because sometimes when we are enable Cloudflare and sometimes for some reason we are enable fighting port and um, the URL getting the indexing because it gives 403 error, okay? So you need to take care before enabling this in headless or traditional because it will affect the page. Yep. Mar? George. <laughs> Hi there. Hi. Thanks for the talk. Thank you so much. Um, in, in one of the last slides, you mentioned you, you recommended using short uh, URLs, yep. short links. Yes. Does that mean that you wouldn't advise to use the WordPress permanent link that includes the year and the month? I recommend to use the WordPress permanent link to edit the URL as per needs, and sometimes we are. Uh, editing the URL according to keywords. Sometimes we, not sometimes, always we are putting the keyword in the URL. 
okay? Even some experts say it's a not a ranking factor or not important, but my opinion is important. It's my opinion. But uh, uh, you have the option to remove the date because it can include yeah, automatically. Yeah, for sure. I, I recommend it to men. Don't uh, mention the date in URL. It's, a, it's a not good, by the way. Okay. okay. So we we should, uh, you should remove the date. Yes, yes. But for existing websites, you need to take care before doing this because you you will change the URL completely, and that will affect an indexing. So I don't recommend to put the date in URL. It's not recommended. Okay. Right. Thank you. What about when you're dealing with a blog and you have the URL category slash the actual post? Do you keep the category in or do you take that out to keep the um, the URL shorter? Yeah, I'm, I'm keeping the category because it need be clear, okay? Uh, I recommend for, for sure, I need the short URL, but uh, I need category to explain this subcategory are coming from the parent category, the name of parent category. So I recommend it to have the category in URL for sure. Category is product, yes. Yep. More? <laughs> Hello. Hello, Melia. Hi, uh, it's actually a continuation from the first question. I was wondering, like, we generally work with e-commerce websites, mm -hmm. so there's about uh, seven, eight thousand pages, um, and sometimes the the link structure is very illogical. So the product is product slash uh, EAN number, or the category is like super long form. Should do you think we should redirect everything, or no, do you think we no. should just keep it? <laughs> no, no, just keeping for sure. So you are talking about huge number of pages. Yeah, it's a, it's a not good to so make a redirect for a huge number. Mm. Okay, so we have a few number of pages. Okay, because let's say we have a seven thousand pages and we have only uh, five thousand already indexed in Google. Okay, so you will affect the uh, pages that index in, your, in Google by making redirects. Every page is, was redirect, redirect, so Google will decrease the impression for sure yeah. and will decrease the indexing. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What if you migrate in website from one CMS uh, to another, uh, for instance, from Joomla to uh, WordPress, and Joomla has uh, one structural links and WordPress different uh, links, and uh, links became broken, and for instance, I have thousand redirections. How <laughs> will that work? Thank you. Yeah, this is a very great question because we have a, a checklist before doing any migration. Okay, because after migration, we need to make sure Google will not decrease the number. But for some reason, it's happened when you are migrate from Joomla, for example, to WordPress. And uh, it's bent on the uh, technology we are using. Are we migrate to headless or traditional? So I know the, the, the URL can be custom. Okay, so we can custom URL in the new version, so and everything go fine. The one, this is one of solutions. There is a lot of solution, but I recommend to uh, to do something to have the same structure of the links. Okay, you don't need to change the links even when I migrate. And for me, I recommend to take care, for example, about. Uh, the core web vital, the BGSP performance, all of these uh, factors. And when you have the weight of that factor, you can doing other stuff like you are changing not all URL, but a view of them to another uh, new URL or a new URL. Yeah. More? Yeah, I have one. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> 
So <laughs> what are your thoughts regarding using a pre-rent solution like pre prerender.io for client side server pages, rendered pages? Okay, I, I'm not a developer by the way, I'm SEO. But uh, it's it's a long topic actually. It's a, because the AI it will affect the SEO nowadays, for sure. And we don't know the future of search engine optimization after Google uh, doing a lot of stuff regarding the AI. So I feel it's it's um, it's um, not good for some reason, okay, because it will affect an SEO, and uh, and especially when Google applying GDPR next uh, year, okay, and consent version two. So there is a lot of stuff regarding to the AI. So it's a very long topic, okay, and we don't know what the future for that, okay, maybe. At what effect? Maybe no. We don't know. Another one. Hi. Hi. Uh, great talk. Thank you. Um, so WooCommerce changed <clears throat> the the website to Who, and something gone wrong, and they revert back. What's What's your opinion about that? What do you think? did wrong and what they have could done better on that. Okay, so you you're doing something, okay, and the, you revert it again. Okay. Like we have a website, let's say in Google Search Console, and we migrate to another domain. Then we told Google we are back again. We <laughs> like the old place. I think there is if you if we change anything for example, uh, if you remove, for example, data structure, if you make anything in on-page optimization, like you remove the title, meta description, keyword, the robots, uh, meta, like indexing, follow, all of this stuff. If you're doing that, for sure you will lose number of indexing. If you didn't, everything is working fine. <laughs> More? Last one. Hello, thank you for this nice talk. Um, for, for a last question, a personal question. Okay. <laughs> uh, regarding uh, pl plugins for sale, which one do you use and okay. why? In the past, I was used, uh, used for many years, okay. But now I'm using RankMax. There is other RankMax, yes, for sure. And uh, I tried other, even uh, I work in a company providing SEO plugin, but I prefer Rank Mess because all of feature in the one plugin, okay, and uh, not expensive. You can't control everything. If you don't have knowledge, for example, the, the, the basics or starter guys in SEO, they can do anything by Rank Mess, by editing robots.txt. Uh, make the page index. If, if you like, for example, to make a page uh, no index, okay, you will go to and check no index and the page will not index. It's easy for everyone. So uh, I'm, I'm using rank mess, okay? And um, I found a lot of features. I'm not using AI content or the other add-on on, on this plugin, but uh, I am, my opinion, rank mess is uh, it is the best one for me. <laughs> Matt, thank you so much. Thank you.